welcome back to my channel. I've been meaning to film this video for a really long time. Um, I don't know why, I just keep putting it off. But now seems like the perfect time to film it because I know a lot of people's financial situations are kind of up in the air at the moment due to coronavirus, gotta love her. I just feel like there's a lot of worry about money at the moment and I would hate for there to be people who are pregnant and are now worrying about how they're going to afford it or maybe people who were planning on trying to have a baby and are now thinking they're gonna have to put those plans on hold so i am here to save the day i'm gonna take that off and tell you that it doesn't actually cost that much to have a baby controversial i know <laughs> I would also just like to have a little disclaimer now and say this is all just from my perspective i'm not a budget saving money expert I'm, I'm not a baby expert i'm not yeah this is all just like ways i've found to save money over the past few years i'm a big believer that having a baby doesn't need to cost an arm and a leg note that i am saying baby not child because i'm very aware that kids once they get to sort of school age and older for the rest of their lives do cost money and it can be very expensive to raise a child however that's different to what i'm talking about i'm talking about those initial few years so when i got pregnant the odds were pretty much against me on paper i was in my third year of uni didn't have a job was just like chilling on student loan i'd maxed out my overdraft my boyfriend had like a fairly low income job he had credit card debt hope he doesn't mind me saying this. We didn't have a car, we didn't live together, we hadn't planned for the baby so we didn't have any savings. Oh and because I found out I was pregnant six months into the pregnancy we also didn't have a lot of time to get our shit together and get prepared and planned and stuff. So on paper it was all kind of against me and actually we managed fine and well enough that I'd be willing to do it again and well enough that I feel I can impart my wisdom on other people so that's all this video is based on also I don't have anything against mum youtubers or bloggers like I know they're just sharing their experience but seeing like newborn essentials videos that have things like snooze pods and sleepy heads was terrifying because if you've called a video newborn essentials that makes me think, okay, I need to buy all the things in this video. A snooze pod is not essential. A sleepy head is not essential. There we go, I've saved you 400 quid just, <laughs> just there. I think it's similar to like any industry that is trying to capitalize off you, like, so, so every industry, <laughs> but like the wedding industry, like people say the average wedding in the UK costs 35 grand. It doesn't mean yours needs to. You don't need to spend like over 30 grand to have a nice wedding and in the same way you can raise a very healthy happy baby and not spend too much money so i hope that makes you feel better and i'm gonna stop rambling now i just feel very passionately about this i do have a lot to get through but if you have any questions please feel free to leave them in the comment section and either i will try to answer them if i can or hopefully someone else who is watching this video might answer them on my behalf okay so first up we have big buys big purchases whatever you want to call them so things like cot push chair car seat is that it <laughs> i think that's it so for these we personally shopped in the sales i know that's like a really obvious thing to say but we found out we were pregnant in october and so we were just in time for like the black friday and the january sales which are obviously like two of the biggest sales of the year i've never paid attention to black friday sales before just because i don't really like to spend money but oh my god the difference that this made we i can't remember like exact figures of how much push chairs and car seats and things like that usually cost but i remember we were saving like 60 or 70 percent on each purchase so overall we saved hundreds and hundreds of pounds on this one black friday so we did buy a lot of this stuff brand new but that was kind of just because we we're in like a big panic but the only thing you really need to buy brand new that you shouldn't really get second hand is a car seat and your baby's mattress so everything else you can get second hand just for safety reasons you should buy those things brand new so that moves me on to Tip number two, which is shop second hand. So Facebook Marketplace, Depop, eBay, um, charity shops, car boot sales, NCT sales, all of those places are amazing and you can get really good quality stuff. Like don't be put off by the fact it's second hand. I think there's kind of a stigma that things that are second hand are like dirty or broken. But the amount of things that we have sold over the past few years that 
is basically brand new it might just be that like we didn't get on with it so things to keep in mind for these big purchases are whether or not they're sustainable so by that i mean if they're gonna last a number of years or if they're something that's only gonna work in the newborn stage so we bought a travel system which is basically a push chair that has a car seat on top of it because at the time that seemed like a really good way to save money by getting the push chair and the car seat together however the car seat only fit Remy until he was like eight months old or something and then we had to get a new one so in the long run that wasn't a very financially sustainable purchase because it didn't last a long time so I would recommend getting a multi-stage push chair and a multi-stage car seat so that it lasts for a number of years also we got a cot bed which was really great I mean it's basically what it sounds like it's just a really big cot and when they get to a toddler age and they want a toddler bed you just take the sides off and it's a bed so I'd really recommend thinking a lot about these big purchases and like what you want out of them so once you have your big baby items you want to think about what is actually needed like what is actually essential so just for the sake of keeping this video short i'm going to link a essentials list in the description i think it's by mumsnet and i really like how they've done it because they basically listed things that are actually essential like genuinely essential like things that you need and then they've gone on to do a separate section which is things that are useful to have if you can afford them basically and that's a really good way of setting things out because too many people are throwing around this essential word and it makes new mums think that that thing is actually needed and that you have to have that thing when you don't so just very quickly because i can hear remy waking up from his nap another thing that you potentially won't need is a changing bag we went out and got a proper changing bag like with all the different compartments because a lot of people said that it's easier to like keep track of things if there's all these different zips and sections we just found it an absolute ball ache like all the changing bags were aesthetically not the kind of bags that me or danny would normally carry it was just a bit fussy like trying to go through all the zips and figure out where the nappies were and where the lotion was or whatever it might be so we just found it more useful to get like a little pouch that was sort of about as big as like a toiletry bag like this <laughs> this big and put like a few nappies and wipes and things like that in there and then just put that in a regular backpack or tote bag that we would normally carry around okay I'm not going to go through every single thing that you probably don't need but just one more another thing you probably don't need is a changing table we got gifted one by a relative and I I'm kind of glad that we did because it was actually quite useful mostly in terms of like saving space because our flat was so small so we put all of Remy's like nappies and toiletries and anything in that realm under the changing table and we knew it was all together and it was on wheels as well so we could like wheel it into the bathroom and stuff it was actually quite useful but we didn't need it and after sort of i can't remember like five six months whenever they start to roll over he just hated being on it and we started just changing him on the floor or on the bed instead just on like a five pound changing mat so again not really needed i think a lot of baby furniture is just insanely expensive and it is for rich people <laughs> okay nappies so you can get reusable nappies which tend to cost more up front but then they're cheaper in the long run because obviously you're not having to buy new packs every single week i'm not the right person to talk about reusable nappies because we personally didn't use them but you can get a lot of information out there about them reusable nappies are also obviously way better for the environment if we have another baby that is definitely the way that we're gonna go um we just didn't really think about it oh leg cramp we just didn't really think about it the first time around i don't know why but if you decide to go with disposable nappies then a tip that one of my instagram followers had was to like from the week that you find out you're pregnant add a pack of nappies and a pack of wipes to every weekly food shop that you do because that way you're spreading the cost out a bit and then by the time you are like surviving on maternity pay you don't have as many outgoings and i do think that's a really good tip obviously if you have space to hoard like 20 packs of nappies and wipes which we certainly didn't but yeah i think that's a really good idea also a big tip is that aldi are so good for nappies and wipes they're pretty much what we've used consistently since remy was born out of convenience we have used pampers huggies sainsbury's own brand and asda own brand and lidl are the lidl ones are awful but yeah we just get on best with the aldi ones which is great because they're the cheapest ones you can get and yeah they just work well <laughs> okay my next tip <laughs> it's not really a tip your baby's nursery decor is for you not your baby your baby does not care what their nursery looks like i completely get wanting to make it look nice because i really wanted to make remy's look nice but ultimately it's not a priority if you're on a budget if we had the money i know i would have spent 
a lot making his room look really nice i wanted to go with like a rainbow aesthetic and i wanted just rainbows everywhere and animals and yeah i wanted it to look really cute and i think again it's that thing where you end up comparing yourself to the mums that you see on instagram and youtube because they all have these perfect baby nurseries and i think it's very easy it's a very stupid thing to think but it's very easy to feel that you're not giving your baby what they deserve because all these other babies have these really cute rooms and you're baby's nursery is really plain or maybe you don't even have a baby nursery maybe your baby is just in with you the whole time which was the case with us and Remy for ages we it's a long story but we basically had a bedroom for him but we didn't check <laughs> when we moved in and there was no radiator in that room so he could never actually move into that room because it was cold obviously by all means if for whatever reason you're watching this video and you have money then make your baby's room look pretty if you want to obviously but what i'm trying to say is it's just not a priority and try not to get sucked into that thing that i have done all too often where i'm just scrolling through all these beautiful baby rooms knowing that i can't give remy that because ultimately it doesn't matter like as long as your child is safe and warm and well fed and they have a nice place to sleep it doesn't matter if they have wallpaper that has raccoons on it i don't know i don't know why that's the first thing i thought of on a kind of similar note is toys you probably don't need to buy that many baby toys obviously everything i'm talking about is going to be different from person to person because some people are going to be very fortunate like us in that we have a lot of friends and family some people are going to be kind of going it alone so they're not going to be able to rely on other people as much so i am going off you know based off like my own experiences and for me we were given a lot of random toys at the baby shower and then just like any time that someone would come and meet Remy for the first time they would generally bring a toy so we ended up with like two toy boxes just full of all this bright plastic crap and Remy liked a lot of it but then there was a lot of it that he just never played with and he just didn't care about at all so we ended up donating it to charity shops so I think my advice would be that you personally don't really need to get toys because other people are probably going to get them. And even with that, like if you don't want a house filled with toys, it might be useful to just suggest to people that you'd rather have like, I don't know, baby clothes instead or whatever it is that you feel that you need. Because it is the kind of thing that you just have to like judge when it comes down to it. Like once Remy got to the age where he was showing interest in toys, we realised he really liked, you know, those like crinkly books, they're like fabric and they crinkle and have colors and stuff he really liked them so we got like three or four of them because he really enjoyed them but we only knew that once he was born and once he started showing interest in toys so there would have been no point buying a bunch of stuff before he was born because he might not have played with it at all which is what ended up happening with a lot of the things that were gifted to us so it's just something to like bear in mind i think a good way of getting an idea of what they like when you haven't actually bought those things yet is going to like baby classes or your local library wherever you go where there's like loads of toys and stuff and just see what your baby is drawn to and then buy more of that stuff if that makes sense like just wait and see what they like is what i'm trying to say it's a very simple concept i'm just making it sound really extra for some reason so now we go on to baby clothes which is a difficult one for me because i was obsessed with buying baby clothes like we could not afford for me to be buying the amount of baby clothes i was buying if i was ever feeling like low or nervous or just any kind of vaguely negative mood i would ask danny to take me to mother care and I would just walk around mother care and I just wanted to buy everything like usually we would just go to the sale rack or I would you know buy like one pair of dungarees but I wanted everything and I don't know why I don't know if it was something personal to me because I was sort of coming to terms with the fact that I was having a baby like it was something I still couldn't wrap my head around so I think it was almost like therapy for me to like I don't know it just made me like imagine a baby a bit more so I was obsessed with it but that is not a cheap obsession so I would recommend like if you have that itch to buy baby clothes try and go to places that are not mother care like charity shops or supermarkets supermarkets have really really cute baby clothes primark has really nice stuff just like if you get that itch try not to go straight to like mother care or next or zara or all of these like really expensive places and just scoot on down to your local charity shop having said all of that you don't actually need to buy any brand new baby clothes that's just a tip for people that are weird like me and get obsessed with small clothes if you just want to dress your baby and that's all you care about then i have some good news for you because you can literally dress a baby for like a whole year 
with like 20 pounds. So number one, quite an obvious one, but accept hand-me-downs. This might be tricky if like no one offers you hand-me-downs, but to be honest, I would recommend reaching out to people you know who have kids because me and Danny are both the first in our family to have children. So we didn't have anyone like that to give us hand-me-downs. I didn't have any friends that had kids, but Danny literally had one friend that had a child who just so happened to be like six months older than Remy. And having just that one friend give us hand-me-downs meant that like, I don't even know, like 50% of Remy's wardrobe was hand-me-downs from Danny's friend. And it was just so useful. And it's not a case of like, they're gonna be wearing clothes that you don't like. Cause we'd just go through all these bags of stuff from Danny's friend and take out what we liked and then give the rest to charity shops. And it's like, everyone's a winner because if people don't want more kids, then they just have all of this stuff to give away anyway. Hunting in charity shops for clothes is also very fun, but that's more time consuming. Like, I don't know if you could get like a full wardrobe that way, but there is a potential, obviously not right now because Corona. Something else I would highly recommend for kids clothes is Facebook Marketplace because people tend to give away bundles of clothes. So they'll say like 10 pairs of six to 12 month jeans for a fiver or something. That's a very good price. So you don't really know what you're getting. Like obviously they usually take a picture of it, but you don't fully know what you're getting. But if your main goal is just to get clothes for your baby to wear, then job done. The only downside really is that you don't get to pick your baby's clothes, but if you're on a tight budget, you probably don't care about that. Or you can do what we did, which was like 80% of his clothes were hand-me-downs or charity shop secondhand situations. And then like 20% were, you know, me going into Primark and seeing a really cute pair of dungarees and getting them in every single color. Oh yeah, okay, similar vein. If you love picking out baby clothes in the same way that I do, you can pretty much assume that everyone loves picking out baby clothes. So at Remy's baby shower, we got so much stuff. And even though most of it was for like that first year, by the time Christmas and his birthday came around, we then got like another year's supply of clothes and so on and so forth. I think people just really like picking out kids clothes because let's be honest, kids clothes are just way cuter than adult stuff. So you can pretty much rely on presents to a certain extent. Again, obviously it depends on the amount of friends and family you have. But I also think we were in quite a unique position in that we only knew one person between us that had had a baby. So I feel like most people when they have babies know someone else who has had kids that they can get like hand-me-downs from. And also this isn't just related to to baby clothes, like you can get hand-me-downs, like a lot of people are willing to give away, you know, their push chairs or whatever it is as well. I think we're probably gonna have another baby, just one more, please. But then after that, like first come first serve, do you know what I mean? Anyone that I know who wants a push chair or a cot or whatever it might be can just have ours. And I know that everyone else kind of feels the same way a lot of the time. So yeah, hand-me-downs are good. I'm almost done. <laughs> Just a few more random tips. My camera is about to die, so I'm gonna be very quick. Sling libraries. Sling libraries are really, really useful because a lot of us want to do baby wearing and have the best of intentions of doing so. I know I did before I realized that my baby was a big old chunk, but slings can sometimes cost like 100 to 200 pounds, sometimes more. If you go to a sling library, they all work differently, but our local one was like, you pay five or 10 pounds or something, and you can borrow a sling for up to a month, I think. I think that was it. If you're interested in baby wearing, I would definitely recommend going to a sling library before you go right out and buy a sling, which is what we did, and I really regret it. Another tip is to sign up to all of the um, like discount voucher company type things, I've written them all down. Um, so like Boots Parenting Club, Emma's Diary, The Bounty Pack, Cow and Gay, SMA, and Ella's Kitchen. They all do vouchers and discount codes. A few of them send you things as well. I remember getting, I think, Emma's Diary and also a Bounty Pack, where they just send like a bundle of stuff to your door. It's all kind of samples of like nappies and nappy cream and all of that kind of stuff. So that was quite cool. Remember that friends and family can help out with essentials as well. So obviously, again, depends on your situation, but this was something I never even really thought of. I never would have thought to ask my parents for anything, same with Danny's parents, but they did offer. So I know that between my mum and Danny's parents, a lot of the big buys were paid for by them because we were just really lucky in that way. But if your parents or close family can't help out financially. There are other ways they can help out. So just things like I was saying with like Facebook Marketplace, you can just ask them to keep an eye out for bargains. Even if they don't have the money to buy things for you, it can just help if they're helping you to look for all of this cheap stuff. Okay, I think that is all the tips and advice I have for that sort of pregnancy, newborn, 
baby first year kind of stage. I think I'm gonna do a similar video of like how to raise a toddler on a budget, like baby classes and snacks and all of that kind of stuff. So let me know if that is something you'd be interested in. I knew my camera was gonna die, I took too long. So like I said before, let me know if you have any questions and I will do my best to answer them. Please give this video a big thumbs up if it helped you in any way. Please send this video to anyone you know who might be pregnant or maybe looking to start a family but doesn't know if they can afford to do so. Basically just anyone who might find this video useful is what I'm trying to say. Um, and yeah, subscribe for more content like this and I will see you soon, bye.